Hey everyone, Nicole Stecklang, Technical Agronomist for the Calvin Asgrow in Northeast Iowa. Um, we're about a week away from the airplanes flying and I just want to get out here, take a look, see what we've got going on so we can, you know, help make those decisions. Now, a lot of these decisions can be made from the desk because we know what rotation that we've got out there. I'm going to prioritize my corn on corn. Um, you also know what weather we have coming up because of all the forecasting tools we have. We know what weather we've had leading up to this point. Uh, we know what hybrids are out there. Um, and not only that, but fungicide is best used as a preventative measure. So before the disease really gets a hold, but it is nice to get out there, see what we're dealing with the most in case it changes our product choices. It's also a really good idea to get an idea of insect threshold because we've got Japanese beetles starting in. It gives you a good idea if you're seeing a lot of corn rootworm beetles. Maybe if you have, you know, it can give you a clue if you've got some rootworm pressure out there to help make some decisions for next year. It's just a good idea to, to get out there and at least take a look around. So come scout with me. Oh yeah, finding some Japanese beetle in here. So the thing with silk clipping insects is that for the most part, um, it's kind of hard to count them and get a threshold. But the most important thing really is to make sure that they aren't getting these silks clipped within a half inch, three quarters of an inch of the top of this ear, just because the more silks you have, the more, the better opportunity you have that a pollen green is gonna come and sit on it. So I'm really close to a uh, to a waterway. So we've got much higher populations right through here. Um, but so far there's not really a whole lot of silk clipping going on. So for this field, I'm not all that worried about um, this Japanese beetle pressure. One of the things that I like to do is, you know, as, as you're walking through that field, you're you're really going too fast to really notice things. So I like to stop and then look up through the canopy. Um, so what I saw specifically when I stopped is some gray leaf spots starting here. So these are mature lesions and this is at the ear leaf already. So I've got a mature lesion here and then I've got another one further up there and then another one further, if you can see that. Ooh. Um, so that's what they look like backlit. If we were to be looking down at these lesions, whew, probably getting a little dizzy. That's what that gray leaf spot is looking like right there. So gray leaf spot is going to look like a rectangle because if you see the veins here, these lines, that gray leaf spot isn't going to jump those vein lines. So it's going to have um, very straight um, lines on the sides there. This is this one right here, especially this is a developing gray leaf spot. So that's just a little tiny little baby gray leaf spot. Walked in a little bit further here and we can see on this leaf we've got a lot of gray leaf spots starting. So give this a couple days and it's going to look pretty severe on something like this, this leaf here because we've already got one, two, three, four, five lesions starting to show up on this leaf. Houston, we have tar spot. First tar spot uh, find of the day. So I'll give my thumb a lick here. All right and try and wipe it off just to make sure, confirm it's not fly poop. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed um, is that, and if you can see, there's like the dot, but then it's like, you almost have like drag lines where you get like little points on the top and the bottom um, of that spot. And I've also noticed a lot of the time, um, whenever I find one, then usually I'll be able to go a little bit further along and find a couple of leaves that have a lot on it. Kind of call it like my patient zero, so. There's just a single tar spot right there on this leaf here. Speak of the devil, found another. So equally as important as being able to know what disease you have is knowing what is not a disease. So good example. Things like this can look a lot like a disease, um, but this is not in fact a disease. This is probably just some leaf burn from when this leaf was inside the whirl and uh, and maybe just got burnt by a herbicide application. Ugh, scared of snakes, scared of snakes, scared of snakes. Although Japanese beetles prefer silks, you may see some leaf tissue damage like this. This is just where those were those Japanese beetles feeding on something until the delicious silk showed up. Also, where did, where did it go? Oh, baby gray leaf spot right there. Grabbed an ear, took the husks off, and then you do the secret swirl movement there. Um, as a silk, um, when the pollen hits it, a pollen tube forms inside of the silk and then the pollen travels 
down the silk to fertilize an ovule where it then becomes a kernel. Um, so they will fall off after their job is done. So if you just swirl it around, um, this is how much we have pollinated. So just the very tip to do. Um, I know that there's a lot of talk about like waiting for brown silk to signify that you are done with pollination. Well, brown silk, um, it really takes the time for these things to dry up and turn brown. So we do have full pollination there. I'm not overly worried about spraying a fungicide with a surfactant as long as we're fully tasseled. It's about spraying something with a surfactant before you're fully tasseled because it can screw up the development of these ovules. It's not necessarily um, screwing up or inhibiting, inhibiting from pollinating um, because it goes the same way with spraying like an ALS herbicide between like V8, V10 and tasseling. It's about preserving the development of the ovule. Once you have full tassel, those ovules are developed and you can go ahead and spray a surfactant with your fungicide. I also check the lower canopy. Um, like I've said before in other videos is that one of the big things I wanna check for, number one, is yield potential. And something that could lower my overall yield potential is if I have nutrient deficiencies. So I like to get down, look through the lower canopy, make sure that all the leaves that are um, still completely attached not seeing any nutrient uh, deficiencies. So I'm not really seeing a whole lot from a nutrient deficiency standpoint right now. Um, I am seeing, you know, some of these leaves might be showing a little bit of a potash deficiency um, or like a nitrogen deficiency there where you see the yellowing along the midrib. But if you look where this leaf, where this leaf is attached, it's starting to slough it off. So it's going to show nutrient deficiencies because it's not attached, attached uh, to the plant anymore. So that's another way that I'm kind of looking for signals on yield potential. Stink bug, this guy right here. See him? Oh yeah, he's ugly. So that's a brown marmorated stink bug. And we've been seeing more stink bugs around the last couple of years. What stink bugs will do is they are a piercing sucking insect. So they'll go and they'll stick their stylus, stylet, something like that, um, through the husk and pierce a kernel and suck the juices out of there. Now, what that can do is it's going to damage the kernel, keep it from um, getting more starches inside of it. But my biggest issue is that when that happens, you have kernel damage and you have a higher risk for um, an ear mold to start on that kernel. This is Hulkus leaf spot. Um, it is a bacterial disease. Basically, it's got that really light, light tan color to it with that outside circle of darker. It is a bacterial disease, not really an issue for us here in, you know, commercial hybrids. Sometimes they'll have issues with it with the, some of the inbreds and breeding, but for us, not really an issue. See him? So that is a Western corn rootworm beetle. That's another thing that I've kind of really been on the hunt for this year are these little boogers. So I've already been out and done our root digs and our corn rootworm control looks pretty good. There's another one. There's another one. You see his butt. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of damage on the roots. We did have a couple of fields last year that had some higher pressure. So we did some rotation on the acres that we couldn't rotate because we can only rotate so much. Um, we went ahead with soil applied insecticide on top of crate. So um, just trying to monitor the beetle populations, make sure that they're not getting too high. And then we will continue with our rotation into next year. So we see this kind of leaf uh, damage caused by insects. Uh, we call that window painting because they just kind of scrape off just the green part. So that leaf scraping, that is any corn rootworm beetles, the adults that are emerging out of the soil. Um, until the silks come out, they're going to chew on something that ends up being leaf tissue. I really need to find out what hybrid we have planted in this field because so far, especially for being this early um, after pollination, it is just really getting lit up with gray leaf spot already. So I know we've had the environment for it. I'm down kind of in a low area, so we're going to keep the, the moisture and the humidity to it. But uh, there's, there's just a lot started in here. All right, I'm such a nerd. I was worried that I worried that I wasn't going to be able to find any northern corn leaf blight for you guys to take a look at, but I found it. So I found this a little bit lower down in the canopy, but this hybrid, um, it's not even quite pollinating yet. It's just getting its silks out. Um, so I did find this little northern corn leaf blight started in here. Um, it's a little concerning just because I know how quickly it can blow up if we keep moisture to it. 
And if we have cooler temperatures, looks like we're supposed to stay around the low 80s. So this can blow up pretty quick, especially if you have a susceptible hybrid. This is on rotated ground, but if I see much more of this um, in the hybrid, I'm gonna check what the rating is on it. Uh, we might still be spraying this, uh, this rotated ground with fungicide if I find much more of this. Also, this is not Northern Corn Leaf Blight. I know a lot of stuff up in the upper canopy. You'll think that it's starting Northern Corn Leaf Blight. This is probably just a little bit of mechanical damage or when this leaf was rolled up and it had a little bit of water um, sitting in that whirl and it got really hot, it might have just bleached that out a little bit, but not a disease, not Northern Corn Leaf Blight. Found another one, Northern Corn Leaf Blight, hello. Something that bodes well for Northern Corn Leaf Blight because it does need leaf wetness um, this is the kind of stuff that Northern Corn Leaf Blight really likes. Um, it is three in the afternoon. Everything else is dry, but just that leftover dew. Um, that's why a lot of times this is the part of the leaf where I will find Northern Corn Leaf Blight kind of right where it starts to, right before it turns down. Cause that's where a lot of water will tend to accumulate on these leaves. Oh, oh, by the way, another stink bug. Hey, little guy. Another stink bug. There's a nice perfect looking mature gray leaf spot lesion. So you can see that rectangular shape, the color, beautiful. Another stink bug. Kind of just want to flick him. All right, finally done scouting our acres. Um, we'll probably end up spraying the majority of them with a the fungicide. Um, corn on corn will also get insecticide just to try and keep on top of the corn rootworm populations that have been building the last couple of years. Um, Overall, just seeing a lot of gray leaf spots starting to show up and it's really fairly early in the season. Uh, wasn't really at high severity yet, but was at very high incidence. Just starting to see some tar spot and even found some northern corn leaf blight, which I was not expecting to see quite yet because I haven't seen any of it yet. The gray leaf spot I have, the tar spot I have. So um, if you like this kind of format of a video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below and I'll take you along again some other time. Uh, otherwise, if you have any questions, call, text, or email.